Hey guys. I'm here, I'm here. Is it working? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone to this feedback stream. And uh, yeah, happy to be there. Hopefully we have lots of track to review. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Just let me get my stuff open. Okay. Just give me a few seconds. All right, all right, all right, all right. So if you want to donate uh, at least uh, $3, uh, three euros, I think, to get your track reviewed. <laughs> Sorry about the noises. Uh, if you want your track to be reviewed, you can donate at least three euros in the link in the description. <clears throat> and I will receive your link. Make sure you include uh, a good quality link. So if you use SoundCloud, make sure you enable downloads so I can actually download the WAV file or send like a 320 kbps mp3 so that it's a good quality so um let's get started so we have a first track by jonathan carillo let's check it out just give me a second guys i'm just gonna get a glass of water Okay. So let's take a listen. So I think I get the idea for 
most of the elements. So, um, there are a few problems in the mix. I would say the biggest problem is the, the kick, that low kind of drum. Uh, it doesn't really blend well. The thing is, it, it kind of stands out too much with the transient here. Even here. And it feels very close. And then you have the other instruments which sound really lush, like they're in the hall. And there is kind of too much of a contrast here. So what you want to do is maybe maybe if you can change the mic mix, because that drum kind of feels like it's really, really close by default. So maybe change up the mic mix a bit. But you could also just put a, a plate reverb or something. Uh, but make sure you cut the lows in the plate reverb so that it doesn't kind of undefine the bass. So that way you keep the tight kick. But uh, that reverb would also tame the transient. You, you see, the transient is a bit too much here. It sounds very close and gives a, a feeling of a kick that's too upfront and not part of the sound. So it's also a bit loud, too loud in volume. So it sticks out a bit too much in volume. In some of the other parts, like the loud parts here, it's the volume wise is kind of fine. But it still feels too close. Uh, because now you have this kind of snappy transient just poking through this and it feels like it's really too much of a difference compared to the orchestral instruments or even the ethnic instruments, which sound a lot more far away. Uh, so when it comes to the, the sustained elements or the instruments, orchestral or ethnic, uh, they're, they're kind of good, but... Let me see. No, not, not too much to say here. Some of them get slightly muddy in the mid-range, just a bit too much. It's not, it's not too bad. Here, for example, the horn fundamental. Actually, maybe I should lower the volume of the song a bit. Okay. Um. You kind of have. You kind of have the horn dominating too much in the mid-range, and we don't really hear enough of the color of the horn, for example. It's a bit too much here. And you want to kind of boost the, the brass a bit more in the, in the high mid treble to get more color. Especially here also too, at the end here. Maybe the violins also a bit, or violas, I'm not sure if it's violins or violas. I think violas. Um, yeah, a bit too much at like 500, 600, but not too much. Uh, so just cut a little bit there, give a bit more color in the treble, and make the kick feel more part of the sound. Maybe, yeah, maybe pan the instruments a bit more. It sounds a bit narrow. You can probably pan, uh, spread the cello a bit more on the right, pawns a bit more on the left. You can probably spread things a bit. It sounds a little bit too centered overall. But yeah, it's pretty good though. It's pretty good. For the most part, the frequency balance is pretty good. So it's just those things here. Um, all right. We have a second track. But I, if I don't respond to the donations instantly, I'm sorry, I don't get the stand notification. Uh, so I can I just check in my Streamlabs afterwards. Okay, let's download it. Uh, oh, it's telling me it will take three minutes. Two minutes to download. Yeah, if possible, go to a website where there is no like uh, speed restriction. But it's fine. It's just going to take two minutes. Yeah, I can hear a bit of prepending from the library, but yeah, it was a bit too narrow by default. Some libraries already sound kind of on the side. This one's just not enough. 
or maybe you just put so much reverb that it's kind of recentered everything, so you need more panning to to compensate. I just spilled some water. <laughs> just wait, I will close the uh, curtain because the sun is too bright here. <clears throat> Okay, one minute left for this uh, upcoming track. So this is this track is going to be by uh, Mad Rai. I hope I see you. I hope I say your name right, Mad Rai. Okay, track isn't completely finished, but looking for the four tips. Okay. Oh, Andreas, what's up? Yeah, just. Just doing a stream. Giving feedback. Okay, almost done, guys. 15 seconds left. Yeah, ideally try to use Google Drive or maybe pick a song or something with, with no download speed restriction. Okay, anyway, I have it now. Let's see this track. So there are a few problems here. Uh, let's start by the beginning. So the most obvious problem is the stereo image, in my opinion. So you just have, you need to remove that stereo enhancer that you put on it. Uh, it's just ruining the entire image of the track. So it sounds, it doesn't sound coherent because it just sounds out of phase. So you need to remove that. And secondly, it sounds like the strings you cut too much bass. Like the, the EQ just feels odd. Um, it's like most of the energy is kind of focused uh, here. Yeah, 
you need to bring back more bass. You need more warmth in the strings. It, it feels too filtered. Uh, these rolls here, these drums sound a bit out of phase also, so you need to remove the stereo enhancer. Yeah, you definitely need more bass and low mids in the strings, but less of that kind of weak sounding mid-range. When you just have too much mid-range and not enough bass, then it makes the the track kind of sounds uh, kind of sounding like it was through um, through a megaphone or like through you know these these loudspeakers, these portable speakers people use in 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 strikes. Because uh, then it sounds like yeah, like you cut too much bass and it's it's all focused in that one area. So you need to to rebalance the the volume of the basses, chili. Uh, make sure you don't cut too much bass in the EQ on on the low strings. Remove the stereo enhancers. And then there is some volume issues, that choir is too loud and doesn't blend with the rest. And also many orchestration issues. Uh, I, I feel like I have to talk about them in this track, but your elements feel too isolated, like you just have the, this one... This one brass instrument here, just, just isolated. And um, it's like the parts like don't really work together. Like you just have this one thing and then this one thing, one after the other. And uh, you just need to stack more things. So I'm not going to get into orchestration too much, but if you actually layer more things in a better way, say for example, you, if you're going to have a brass melody, then you need brass chords and you need a brass bass line, for example. Uh, like for, if, you just, if you just have that one a staccato bass bass line, carrying the whole track and then you have a lot of other stuff in the mid-range it's not going to be enough to to carry the rest like you want balance in the harmony so you need to kind of make sure that you have if you have a lead element you also have chords for it a harmony to support it and then a bass line so that's what's kind of lacking here and that's why the the track might feel too uh, how would you say in english um Kind of too too naked, I would say. But you have some nice ideas, like there is some nice melodies in there. You just need a bit better orchestration, and that's gonna affect the mix a lot. And when it comes to the final part, um, it's too loud. And the mid-range, the trumpets are too loud. The mid-range in general is overpowering the bass, so you get a track with a kind of a weak sounding response. That's mostly centered about the uh, around the choir and the trumpets, and you just have an unbalance here. It's not gonna sound good if I do that, but you want you want it to sound more f like more warmer, basically. So you need to fix the levels, fix the orchestration, and if you do that, if, and you kind of spread the voices more evenly and add more voices in the bass and make sure the volumes are even, then you will get a, a frequency response that's more bass heavy, something like that. <laughs> But of course you can't just do that and, and call it fixed. So you need to fix your levels first. The trumpets are obviously too loud. Anyway, yeah, that's it for this track. Um, yeah, it sounds a bit midi as well. That's... That's due to the expression. So you probably want to add more variation to the expression. For example, the trumpet is very static, very flat. You, maybe you want to give more articulation, like instead of doing... Like instead of doing... You can do like... 
Dun, 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 dun. You, you can kind of add more variation in the expression. Same for the same for the drums. Instead of doing like the, the snare, doing like da, 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 at the same volume all the time, you can do like da, 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 da. So you kind of do a ramp up every time. All that kind of stuff uh, helps giving more interest and making the track less flat feeling as well. Uh, all right, so let's go to the next track uh, by uh, Julien Journet. A French brother. So let's see what he has. Downloading now. All right, let's listen to it. I'm just gonna comment as I hear it. Uh, that sound at the intro, it's a little bit too resonant. I, I get the mood uh, that it's trying to set, but probably wanna cut a bit there. So it's a bit less heavy at this spot. And then when the piano kicks in, It's a dark piano. I mean, you could leave it like that. You could cut maybe a few dB here, but maybe you could just dynamic EQ. See, some of the notes are a bit louder. So if you just dynamic EQ, I see this note here gets a bit too annoying and resonant. Yeah, it would avoid these massive uh, muddy resonances. So a bit of dynamic EQ, but not too much. Uh, also, the, the chirping is annoying. Uh, on the pedal really simple. There is a, a really weird chirping sound here at the very high, very high end here. It's, it's too much. See, it's gone now. So a way to fix it would be to roll off the noise. If you still want that kind of noisy feel, because it's part of the sound as well. Uh, you can just cut. Yeah, just focus on that frequency here. Do like that, something like that. So the chirping is not as annoying. definitely cut the piano a bit in the low mids, it becomes more of a problem when there is other stuff at the same time. Here you have a level problem, the piano is too loud, the voice is too quiet. So actually if you lower the piano in volume first, maybe you, you wouldn't have to EQ it. Uh, if you lower it quite a bit, you might not need to cut these low mids. I will still do a couple dB. All 
And this, this effect is maybe a bit too dry considering the mood of the track. Don't hesitate to drown it in reverb, that hit. The voice is great, but the voice needs to be louder. Action strikes. Note, that vocal note gets a bit jarring uh, in the mid range. That's a cool. That's a cool part. It's a cool track. Uh, there is a f couple orchestration problems, well, composition problems. That drum loop from Action Strikes is too light for this whole part. So you need like another drum that's kind of bigger, not as high end, not as small, kind of with uh, more body to it, uh, just more length to it, more fatness to it. Maybe another tom ensemble. So you can use that Action Strikes for the high layer, and you can add a second sample, a heavier sample, to really bring more size to the drums. And during this whole part, this, the mid-range is just kind of overpowering everything. So you want to kind of control like the 300 to 600, because there is a bunch of sustain elements here which kind of drown the rest of the frequency spectrum. And it makes also the drums feel a bit weak as a result. Oops, sorry. A, a drum that has a bigger dynamic impact so every time there is a hit you want the hit to really move the bass more and uh, the mid-range to be less muddy here at this range so cut some instruments some of the instruments here some of the pads you don't need to put minus 1 db in the limiter uh, you can just do minus 0 0.1 it looks like you did minus 1 here yeah, you don't need to. Uh, and also it's a bit too loud, like there is just not, not enough space for the dynamics here to breathe. So once you put your bigger, nicer drums, make sure the bass can still move compared to the sustained elements. Make sure there is enough dynamics even at the loudest part. And yeah, you can hear here the problem. It's, it's, it's just too much mid-range. It's too muddy here and all that all that range here from your sustained instruments is just kind of masking the, the treble color that you can also get from this brass and stuff like that. So if you cut there on some of the media instruments, you will get more of the high end, uh, high mid color. It's just going to sound more even for your sustained instruments. It's not too late to send. You can still send the... Uh... So you can just make a donation and put the link, download link for your track. And uh, I will say it's like that.
Okay, so for, for this final part, the voice could sound a bit wider. You can put a bit of a huge reverb, ambient reverb on that voice. The percussion at the end sounds a bit dry. You can put maybe a bit of plate reverb on that, on that percussion. And the, the voice is not dry, sorry, it's a bit too narrow compared to the rest. So maybe you can use like a doubler. A doubler is a nice way to create width in the vocal so that the vocal kind of feels like it's filling the space. If for this kind of ambient vocal, it's nice. So not to have it too narrow. Sometimes when you put reverb, it's not going to sound wide. Uh, it sounds like you put some black hole reverb or something like that. Even tight black hole or something. Uh, and sometimes reverb is not going to help with the width. So before the reverb, you can put something to give more width, like a doubler, and it's going to make the vocal feel like it fills the stereo spectrum more than right now. I mean, it's an ambient flute, so it can be really wet. But yeah, really, really nice track. Like, it's really great. Great ideas in there. All right. Um, oh, so then we have a track by Brian. He says, love your channel. Thank you, Brian. OK, I'm downloading your, your track right now. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. What is this? What is this brick wall here? What is? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, wait. I will turn on the light. Now it's too dark. <laughs> okay. Maybe it sounds good. Like. Sometimes you have a brick wall, but there is still dynamics. It's hard to tell just by looking, but it does look really loud. So we'll see. It's cool, cool chord ideas. I like the chord progression here. Um, so during the whole intro, the whole intro actually sounds pretty good. I would say for the most part, no problems. Uh, you could pan things a bit more. The strings, you could pan slightly more, a few percent more to get more width. Uh, in the intro, there is a non-stop resonance, which bothers me a bit as well. 
Uh, I think it's coming from a pad or something. Yeah, around 500 here. Yeah. Uh, there is just a pad that's a bit too annoying because it's non-stop and it distracts a bit too much from the piano sometimes. But it doesn't poke out too bad all the time, so maybe just dynamic EQ that resonance on that pad or throughout the intro. So it's too loud, uh, there is not enough dynamic range here, and as you introduce the percussion, it just doesn't breathe enough. The percussion is too quiet. Even, even right now here the percussion is too quiet, and all throughout the track it's too quiet. And uh, if you boost it, you will never be able to keep that volume, and it's never gonna get any dynamics because it's too loud. Uh, that cello here is too loud in volume. And there is a weird resonance here. Like somewhere in the high mids. A bit of a weird resonance in the cello, and it's just too loud in volume. And you need bigger percussion, more low end, compared to the mids and the highs. To breathe. In the climax you have some low end, but it's just rumble because it's too limited, so it can't breathe. And the brass sounds distorted actually, because it's so limited. It sounds like too much trouble here, a bit too much trouble, it sounds like distortion from a limiter. Kind of. And uh, you, need, you need more bass dynamics. Actually, I think if we look at this through an analyzer, the bass is not going to look that low. You, you probably have a fair amount of bass already, but it just doesn't feel like a lot. Because it's not dynamic bass, it's flat bass. Uh, let's look, it's probably not going to look too low. Yeah, see, here it's like around here and then it's in the middle, so your bass can be around here, a bit, a bit higher. Uh, it's not too bad, as I said, but... It's too flat. So if you look at the meter here, you can see uh, on the left it's dynamic, on the right it's not dynamic. You can see it's like two thirds of the way to the right, so it's kind of too brick wall. In fact, I don't know why it's not more on the right, because it's really too, too brick wall. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it for the bass. So a bit more bass and a bit more dynamic bass. Um, yeah, but there is cool ideas here, so hopefully that helps you mix this track. Okay. Um, then we have uh, Mititan. He says, incoming Collegno monster. Nice, Collegno. There is not so many people who use Collegno. That's cool. Let me see. Okay, so. Oh, it's a small track. <clears throat> Let's hear it. Pretty cool. I mean, the part at the end sounds really good, not much to say. Uh, the first part, um, there is a bit of mud in the low mid. So, um, I 
it's mostly coming from the cello. So the cello, they can be made, cellos can be made around 200, 300. So you want to kind of watch out for this. you need to fix that on the instrument itself but yeah a bit there and that, that viola uh, i feel like so you introduce the violin at some point but for so long the track feels a bit too much on the right so you could probably have that viola kind of that's the viola right on, on the on the right oh it's a high cello maybe I don't know, it's hard to tell sometimes, depend on the recording. Um, but you can kind of have that on the left, because that way it would kind of start balancing out the track a bit more. So instead of having it on the right as well. Um, yeah, not too much on the left. Oh, Muddy's not... Muddy means just... Not necessarily conflicting with something else, just... Yeah, that's violas, that's what I thought, okay. So the violas you can put slightly on the left, actually, instead of, instead of being quite on the right. Um, so it just balances things a bit more. And the viola is a bit muddy at 500 as well, so you can cut a bit there. And the violin also is slightly muddy at 500. So that's that. Um, but for the most part, it sounds really good, actually. Just a bit of that muddy mid-range and, and that muddy 250, 300 on the cello. Watch out these resonances. Here, maybe it's just slightly honky in the final part. Slightly honky. But it's just a few dB, right? So nothing too bad. But it's really cool. Really, really cool track. All right. Let's see next. We have a track by Nordic Dun. Mr. Dun. Dun Dun Dun. <laughs> Let's listen to it. So let's stop there. Um, it's actually really cool for the most part. Uh, it's really well mixed. Okay, so that kind of that drone kind of siren sound. Just slightly too hollow here, so you could cut it a little bit here and maybe distort it more so you have a bit more color around 2, 3, 4k for that kind of siren sound. Um, when it comes to the drums, the ones that do like da, 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 the main drums, the ones you can hear, these, these ones, uh, they have a bit too much uh, 600 hertz. So 
It makes them sound a little bit too washy. Okay, so you can cut that a bit. But for the most part, uh, it sounds good. Uh, this hits maybe sound a bit too weak in the bass, so here you had a nice kind of bass bump. But maybe it's not enough. You can have a bit more of a bass bump in that hit. And, and this one sounds a bit too weak, I guess. Like, you make sure that you have more like a low boom type of bass, long bass, but a bit punchy as well. So it's a little bit more impressive. Okay, and then the next part. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> the hits don't really punch in the low end. Like they don't give that bass bump that they should. They do to some degree, but it blends into the bram, and it's not like you can f really feel that punch enough, especially for the build-up here. There is like a sustained sub, a constant sub towards the end. Maybe it's part of a riser or something. Uh, you shouldn't have that because it's gonna prevent the hits from having any power. Um, so there is a constant rumble going on here. Make sure it gets cut because that way the, the hits can really punch and be defined. Right now your hits are not really defined. So make sure you got rid of all the rumble that could get in the way. See that? If you have this constant rumble, it's gonna prevent the impact that your hits can have so that they feel less punchy because of that, uh, among other things, but yeah. Actually, this sounds a bit better. Yeah, this sounds a little bit better, maybe. Still too weak, and there is still that constant sub from something that's not helping. There is a constant rumble in between the hits, like a 40-50 hertz. It's not, it's too much. You, sh you don't need a constant rumble there. That's really just for the hits. You can have that sustained bass more around 80, 100, 120. It's too dark overall, uh, the, the hits are the only bright thing, so the horns can be brighter. Uh, the bass line can be brighter, like you need like a chambasso or a tuba or something with more gnarly sound for the bass line as well. So the, the sustain elements are a bit too dark. The hits are pretty good here at the end. Actually, they are quite punchy, but there is still that rumble. And you probably don't need so much transient here, so you can limit that a little bit. It's, it's a little bit too uncomfortable in terms of transient. So yeah. But, but yeah, just if you can fix these hits, otherwise it's, it's really solid and the sound design is cool though. And yeah, make the stuff a bit brighter because everything is a bit too dark. Even the, if the mood of the cello is a bit too dark, if you're gonna have a loud horn, you want that loud horn to sound like a loud horn, not to be too muffled. That's the, that's the idea. Okay. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, okay, guys, so now I'm going to check my email because I need to download something there.
By the way, uh, I don't have any tracks after this one, so if anyone wants to wants their track reviewed, feel free to donate and uh, post your link here. But right now we have one more track. Do -do -do. So this track is by Cloud Sky One. Let's see. Oh, this one is a bit quiet. I'm gonna have to turn it up. Actually, no, it's fine. So, the mid-range is a little bit too muddy. From the cello, for example, we have some EQ issues in the low mid, so it's gonna be from like... From like 250 to... to 500, pretty much. So, it, it sounds a bit muddy because of that, so you're gonna wanna cut here and... Also dynamic EQ cut because in some of the instruments you have some peaks kind of peaking and making the sound muddy but not all the time. So let me find an example here. For example here, you have a resonance here. It's not all the time, so what I recommend is just kind of going into the instruments, find the muddy spots around 250 to 500, and do a partial cut because some things are going to need to, need to be cut, like the chili need to be cut probably around 300, 350. Uh, but also do a bit of dynamic EQ so that way you kind of control the mid range and it never really gets too muddy. It gets controlled around these peaks, and you don't have these single resonance peaks which go like and just kind of you know, sound weird through your ears, so... Maybe I can just demonstrate one here. Of course it's not perfect because I'm doing it on the whole track. Okay, see for example here it's too muddy on this note. It's always the same note pretty much which resonates too much. So you can probably just cut overall a bit. And then you can have one one here. Right, something like that. And then bit maybe one here. On that note here. So of course you wanna go into the individual instruments, but let's see how that makes the sound better. Um Okay, see, just controlling these peaks will feel much better. So if I if I turn it off, on, right? It's now controlled. It's more balanced. You don't have that resonance through the spectrum. So watch out for this. Of course, don't overdo it. Let the instrument breathe. That's why you don't want to do just dynamic EQ. Also, use a combination of normal EQ, because some of this stuff is just too much all the time. That's pretty much the point here. Uh, also, I forgot, uh, it's too wide. Uh, maybe you use too much stereo enhancer. 
I doubt the library just came like that. Uh, the stereo image is a little bit too, a uh, little bit too wide. Sounds a bit artificial. So you might want to check if you have any stereo enhancers. Just do like five percent on the mix, but I don't know. It just the stereo image just sounds not very focused because of that. But yeah, otherwise it's cool. It's, I like the mood of this track. Uh, so. Oh, uh, Midi 10, you're saving the day. Giving me the content when I don't have any. Yay! <laughs> um. Oh, 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 there is a bunch of new tracks. Thank you, guys. You're just saving me right there. I feel saved. <laughs> okay, so. The uh, Tear Ascent. That this track is by Mititan, yeah. Okay, let's play it. So I can give you just a tip about orchestration first. You have a bit too much unison going on in the melodies, so because it's also affecting the mix. Because because you have too much instruments playing the melody, uh, kind of in unison and not enough harmony, it just kind of focuses the energy in that mid range in that one particular harmonic. So it creates a bit of a resonance in the mid range. So by spreading kind of the voices better, you would get a more even um, frequency response because you wouldn't have that one harmonic kind of moving around all the time through the mix so if you see that one peak in your frequency analyzer that that might be why uh, i mean in some cases it's fine but here you get a bit too much unison here <laughs> it just sounds a little bit too much like you just have that melody dominating everything um not in all spots you do have nice harmony in in some spots but in some in some of the spots, it's a bit too much unison. Uh, so other than that, the instruments are pretty well EQ'd. You just have a bit too much mid-range. Um, in the violins, you, you might want to cut the violins fundamental a bit more. So like... They just kind of resonate here. 
so it, it sounds a little bit too muddy. But it's not, it's not too bad. I would probably do a bit of dynamic EQ just to notch these fundamentals. When they resonate a bit too loud, just notch them a couple dB, you know? Same for the brass, uh, some of the brass has a bit too much mid-range. Uh, in, in some spots, in some notes, it's worse than other spots, but... Um, oh, the final, yeah, I will listen to the final hits. That's weird, it feels really weak, but the transient is huge. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in... Yeah, maybe maybe a bit more of a mid-range element to it, because it sounds quite rumbly. And it feels a bit too soft, like just it's like just bass. Uh, I guess that's a bit more of a snap to it, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, it's not all... I mean, your strings EQ is pretty good. I can hear that you already cut some mids, but for example, in the... You have a, maybe it's the piano, it's hard to tell because it's unison again. Again, it's unison. So you have a violin, but you also have something else. So maybe it's that other thing on top. It could be that piano. I can't really hear if that piano also has a, a harmonic here. But in that 600 range, it's, it, it's overpowering. But it could be because you have too much unison. So if you decide to sp spread your voices more, you could kind of avoid that and have less EQ to do. So that's also something to consider. See, here it's too much unison. Um, like you have the violins with trumpets. You probably don't want to do exactly the same thing, especially since they're so loud. Because um, the trumpet is already quite loud. Uh, 248, 330, let me check. Um, Yeah, see, you also have the low brass, you have the trombones kind of following the melody. I, I would make something that's more like a contrary movement, it would sound better. And there is a bit of mud in the low mids. Uh, also about the percussion, I noticed that uh, there is a shaker, it's a bit too dry, and it doesn't feel part, part of the orchestra. That shaker here. So. If you add a, if you add a whole reverb to a shaker that's close mic, it's not gonna feel far away. It's never gonna work. You're gonna get a weird high end shimmer. It's not gonna sound good. So what you want to do is add a room reverb, a smaller room reverb, just to give early reflections to the shaker, and that way it feels kind of more far back into a space. And that's how you wanna add depth to a shaker. Because if you just add whole reverb, it's never gonna work on a shaker. So don't even try. It's gonna sound like tsh, tsh, like a weird high end. You're not gonna get the the depth. I think if you fix that unison problem, you will get less clutter in the mids to begin with. Yeah, you can use the room knob slider to put it more back in the room, actually. And also, just to finish on this track, uh, the percussion. It's a little bit too rumbly, so if you can get more detail in the, in the low end. Like I can feel an impact, like around 40, really low, but it's kind of lacking of some more defined impact bass around 80 to 100 for the, the bass. 
So you probably want a kick that's also a bit more focused on the higher bass, not just the super subby stuff, because it's a bit too rumbly and feels very low. So you want to have a bit of impact a bit higher in the range, like more like 100. That way it feels a bit more rhythm, rhythmic, that's the word. But yeah, it's cool though, it's cool. Okay, so then we have, uh, we have another track by Brian. Uh, first time you try to make this type of music. Okay, let's see. Um, I like the title of the track. <laughs> GFS, 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 you just smashed your keyboard. <laughs> nice. So let's listen to GFS, 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 GFS. Let's see. So that kick is a bit loud, but uh, it can work because it seems the track is less about the orchestral elements. So it matters what's coming next to, to see the level of that kick, if it's alright or not, but... It could be fine. Um... I would say compress the kick a bit more and tune the releases maybe like 150 milliseconds or something. Just so you can make the kick last a bit longer in the bass, so it feels a bit bigger. It, it feels a bit like it's slightly too tight, considering what type of kick it is. It could feel a bit longer in the bass, so with compression and the release, you can kind of enhance the length of the kick. So, uh, that snare, that snare has too much of the 10 to 20k, uh, so you want to low pass filter it a bit, and also I recommend saturating it so you get less of a sharp transient, kind of needle-like transient, a bit more of, um, a, bit more of a, a longer transient, so you can use a combination of filtering and saturation to get a bit of better snare. Uh, let me show you, if I just take Saturn. Um, where is it? Of course, it's not gonna work if I put it on the whole track, but let's let's find the snare. So distorting the transient a bit can help. It's not gonna work here because I need to just solo the snare. Let me just solo the snare. Um. Okay, just, you kind of want to get a longer transient, so... See, see how it's softened the transient here? Anyway, so you want to soften the transient and also cut a bit, a bit the highs. Um, so, let's... 
that way it's gonna make the snare feel more part of the mix. Uh, so the, the kicks, the kicks, uh, they sound a bit too dark, especially when there's a lot of stuff going on. So I would recommend using a kick with a, a second kick just for the high end with a better texture. So something that's not so tight, something that's a bit more like sandpaper, like something that's a bit more of a longer, more textures feel in the high end. So you could use a second kick that you saturate to get a bit more of a nicer texture and you put it on top. So that way it's not just that tight electronic kind of high end, but a bit more of an interesting texture on the kick. That would be nice. Um, the bass. The bass, you can make it wide. Uh, it doesn't have to be mono, especially from like 100 hertz up, you can put it wide. So I would recommend using like a, a room reverb. I'm talking about the sub bass. Um, this one. It sounds a bit mono, it doesn't have to be. Of course, check the phase in mono to see if it works. And you can actually filter the reverb so that it's not really affecting the 40, 50, like the fundamental basically, but everything above gets affected. Uh, so something that sounds a bit like that. Compared to. You know, just putting a room on it or just like a stereo generator or something to kind of add differences, make the bass feel a bit wider. Of course, check the phase in mono, make sure it doesn't mess up the track in mono. But you can, like, it's just a wasted potential if you leave it completely mono like that. Um. And make sure you say chain a lot. Like... I think you already have some side chaining going on. Like I can hear it going up here. Maybe do a bit of a faster release, but do even more side chain. Or like say, say like from 80 hertz and below, you can add a second multiband side chain with like even more. So it's like you don't have any bass whatsoever for the kick, like minus 12 dB or something. If you if you do full range, you're gonna you're gonna notice the you're gonna notice the ramp up. So you can have the ramp up a bit faster, and then a second multiband side chain just pinning down the sub bass completely. So that's for the trap elements. See a, a sub bass a bit wide like this one. There is no reason you can't have a wide sub bass on the on the drop as well. But that bass actually feels a bit too much to the right. So maybe there is a phase issue going on, so make sure it feels more centered. The sub bass. Yeah, that snare is really too distracting, that treble of the snare, like, which I mentioned before. Yeah, you can. That's the thing. You can do a unison bass on the on, on the drop sub bass as well. Uh, but maybe what you can do is like have the unison voices a bit more distorted, but also filtered so it's not affecting the fundamental. That way, the fundamental stays mono. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be hundred percent mono. Actually, there is some tricks you can use to make a stereo sub bass that actually works in mono and doesn't get messed up in mono. Uh, but again, it's really risky, so you need to see if it works. So always convert to mono, check in mono the mix, see if there is like a loss of volume due to phasing. But you can get something stereo, even in the sub bass. But the, generally, if you filter it below 100, don't, don't need to do a brick roll, just filter it gently below 100. So that way the, the, the lowest first harmonic is not really affected by the phase. But you can get all the stereoness from like the second harmonic of the sub bass. That's kind of the idea. But I really love this track. It's it's really cool. It's really, really cool. 
yeah, maybe some of the elements, like the the other effects, like the synth kind of growls and stuff. And they sound a bit buried, so they, they can also come up in the drops, I would say. But it's, it's really great, it's really cool. Da -da -da. Oh, it's your first time. Yeah, it's actually you said it's your first time making this. Wow. Like for our first time, it's it's amazing. Seriously. Uh, Jonathan Cario, again with another track. So I helped you with this one. And you fix the stuff I pointed out. Okay. Let me listen to it again. Okay, let's see. That cello sounds a bit too much to the right. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but it sounds a bit too panned, a bit too disjointed on the right here. the thing the violin oh hold on so the violin sounds fine the cello is too much to the right so maybe you're panning with numbers and you need to to just listen because sometimes if you do 30 percent left on the first violins 30 percent left on the cellos it's not actually gonna feel like that because the library was pre-panned by default differently like the chili basically felt like 20 percent more on the right by default so it doesn't feel balanced, it feels like the cello are like way up to the right and the violins are just like 30% to the right. So when you pan the library, just go with your ears, don't trust the panning knobs, how they look at all. Because it might not be even, it might be completely offset to one side if you just kind of try to be symmetrical looking at the panning knobs. And that cello sounds a bit too much at 500, like 400 hertz. And the choir sounds a bit stereo enhanced. Did you put a stereo enhancer? on the choir. A peak at 2.5k that's from the choir that you might want to cut a few db like 2k something like that it's when the singles kind of hit a certain note it feels a bit jarring it's from the choir There is kind of some wild resonances here, which you might want to tame with dynamic EQ. It's not always all the time. Uh, also, the track is too flat, as some of you pointed out. It's too much compression. Oh 
yeah, that's where the that's where the choir is at two point five k. Okay, exactly two point five. Okay, there's like a high violin also at three k. Actually, is it 3k? Yes, 3, 300, 3k, yeah. So you need to cut there as well, just focus on that range. So yeah, this spot on the high lead, maybe it's not just the violins, but the violins and the choir here. And, uh, but otherwise, it's actually pretty well EQ'd overall. And it sounds pretty good. And the percussion is actually quite punchy. Like, it sounds like it can be more punchy. But it's actually quite punchy considering how loud the track is. Oh, yeah, also lower it by like, lower the master by like 3 dB at least. You probably want to lower the master 3 or 4 dB. I don't know. Until it hits like minus 8 or minus 9 LUFS. That way you can actually feel the punch more. But like the fact that you can get that kind of sound with this kind of loudness shows that the mix is quite good. So nice job, nice job with the EQ on this. Um, but yeah. Do, do, do. Okay. Next, don next donation is from uh, Dan, who said Joel is sexy. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I am because my shot isn't. Okay. Uh, next track. Uh, Mathieu de Gouet again. <laughs> Let me download this. <laughs> the Beast Within, that's called. Let's see.
Okay, so there are a few things. It's a bit tri this one is a bit tricky. So there is a bunch of over EQing. Um, like the high end feels too too kind of brittle. Let me show you. This hi hats, for example. Also, this track is an MP3, so it's probably not helping me hearing the full picture, but there is definitely too much. It's kind of distracting. And the drums are too scooped, so the drums sound very much like that. So you have kind of a MIDI sub bass and a bit of a brittle 6k and up. And it just sounds a little bit too fake, so you probably don't want to scoop the drums that much. And then the, the brass has some MIDI 400 hertz. Yeah, like two, three, four. So you want to cut the low brass. Uh, like the tubas or something like that. They're just mudding the low mids a lot. All these harmonics from the tubas. You probably want these hits to be louder and more defined. They kind of get lost a bit in the bram, so it, the hit doesn't feel like it's standing out as much as it should. I'm talking like in the bass. Uh, there is kind of a tight treble in that hit, so that's fine, you can hear the treble. Uh, but the bass kind of doesn't bump as much as it should. But actually, it, the, the hit is fine. I, I guess it's like there is sub from other elements which are maybe getting in the way a bit too much. Like, it sounds like there is some big muddy drums after the initial hit. Like, doom, doom, like the two hits that follow it. And they sound a bit too bassy, so it makes the hit feel less powerful in comparison. So you probably don't want so much sub bass, like 40, 50 hertz on these following hits. So that way the hits are just a bit stronger. And... There's just level problems. Uh, overall, there is level problems. You can hear the low brass, like the tuba, is too loud. Um, and the horn is too quiet, so the horn is kind of like shy with like it's kind of brittle treble and it's not really heavy. By the way, the horn, is it a trumpet? No, that's a horn. It, it, it almost feels like a trumpet because there is a bit too much treble, but the volume of the horn is too low and the tuba is drowning everything, especially in the low mids. Also, it feels like there is a stereo enhancer on this. It makes the stereo image feel too wide. A bit weird. And anyway, just, just a bit too much weird EQ and a bunch of elements kind of over EQing some of the stuff. The hits, over EQing, too much cutting the hits in the mids. Um, so maybe be a bit more gentle with EQing and take care of these low mids and the tuba. And that way the, the track sounds a bit less brittle, a bit, a bit fatter. Because sometimes when you overprocess, it's going to sound a bit too weird like that. This one is a bit complicated, but yeah, there is a bunch of weird EQs on, on a few things, uh, which I mentioned. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. Next we have a... Did I, did I just play this track? Yeah, that's the one I just played. Um, so after that we have another donation, but there is no link. 
a Tim. Also, I'm glad that was helpful. Um, so, uh, Tim Deville donated four euros, but you didn't include your track. Did you? Did you want to include the track? Or I'm just making sure because sometimes people forget to put the link. But for now, I don't have any other tracks to to review. But I might have one if he forgot to include the link. Just making sure. Oh, you forgot? Uh, yeah, uh, Justin Robbins. So, yeah, uh, feel free to email me. So if you go to... Okay, just I will put my email in the chat. If you go there, you can send me the, the link that you forgot to include. Okay, sounds good. Uh, hold on, I'm just reading the chat. That's why I'm looking up. Uh, if I can review YouTube links. Uh, not really, because I can't stream the audio from YouTube links. Frozen 2 trailer. Oh, I guess I can just listen to it uh, offline, I mean, off stream, because I'm not going to have the sound. Yeah. Oh, there was a question by Alan Lennon. Uh, should we brick wall sub base below 30? Uh, I would say don't do it on the master, if possible. You can do it on the master, actually. It's, it's fine. But um, I typically do it on the, the elements which have sub base to begin with. So, so you have like a big sub hit. Or like you have a, yeah, like you have a really low boom. Or like just a hit, a trailer hit, and it doesn't need all that super low 20 to 30 because I would say no samples actually need that low bass. It is just kind of taking power from the from the speakers because it makes the speakers work. At least they try to work because not many speakers can go that low. And it's not really something that's gonna be very useful. So you can usually get a cleaner sound if you filter like the 20 to 30. So instead of doing it on the master. I would recommend doing it on just on the elements um, which have that sub bass. So like a low boom or actually a low boom doesn't really matter, but like a hit because it's going to kind of prevent the speakers from trying to move all that difficult air to move that super low bass, which you can't really even feel or hear. And uh, it's going to kind of focus the area around like 30, 40, 50, which is already super low. And that's a more important range. So yeah, just no need to do it on the master if you do it on, in the mix on hits, which might have that super low bass. But so, some of the hits, some of the instruments won't really have anything done there to begin with. So then it doesn't really matter. Um, I have a question. Cherry Music, how do you mix your tracks for publishers? Compressed. Yeah, like it's not really going to matter if it's loud or not. Like to be honest, because the, the people who are going to select the track, they know what they're doing. So you don't need to like impress them with super maximum loudness. And actually it's going to sound better if it's, uh, if it's more dynamic because so many of these trailer tracks just have wimpy flat hits. So if you, if you actually have bigger hits and that sounds huge, you know, in the bass, uh, it's going to sound much bigger. So. In some cases, they will ask you to make a master. In some other libraries, they will do the master themselves. Either way, they're probably going to use your stems, your separate stems, which are going to be quiet. So that's fine. But like to kind of, for your master, if you want to send the master, I would say just do a normal master, just do like minus eight LUFS, a normal loudness that will allow you to have big hits. Uh, you don't need to do like super massive hits, like hits you might hear in the final edit of a trailer, because to, to make this final edit, these guys, they make hits which are like 30 dB of the music. So that's more like a sound effect type of hit at this point, and it's a bit different. So you probably want to do something that's a bit coherent. So the hit's very loud, but not so loud like a, like a final trailer edit. 
just something that's nice and kind of well-rounded. So I would say like, yeah, you go for like minus eight LUFS and that should give you enough loudness so that it's not super quiet. And also it should give you enough headroom to have massive hits as well. Something in between, yeah. Don't go for like minus six. Don't go for minus five. Like there, there is Trillac companies which go way too loud, like uh, 2Y, um, what else, two steps from hell, of course. Uh, some tracks by Phantom Power. Like, basically, they go so loud that there is not, head, not enough room for the hits. So you end up with something with like kind of a low bass. I mean, a, a cut bass, that's what I mean. And just a flat mid range. So all you get is pretty much mid range, like horns. And, and the hits sound like they're just like, da, 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 da. like you can hear the big snares, but they don't really punch through dynamically. And if you try to push your tracks to minus five, there is just not enough headroom to actually get these dynamics in the hits. So you end up with something with a cut bass, just flat kind of mid range and it's tiring on the ears. It doesn't sound impressive. So yeah, don't go past minus seven. Like some tracks will go to minus seven and still sound good, but stick to minus eight. Minus n I, I mean, I send tracks to cavalry at minus nine, I think like nine and a half in the climax and uh, yeah. You know, the bigger you want your hits to sound, generally the more dynamic range you need. So if you want them to sound good and not sound squashed. So it's not a problem. They're not going to refuse your track because it's 2 dB to quiet compared to another track. Um, do -do -do -do. Yeah, let me read the chat. Yeah, I I'm glad you learned a lot, uh, Mitit, and glad I can help. It's nice. Yeah, with training, the more you mix, the more you train your ears, the more you're going to hear these problems. And uh, it's just going to become obvious after a while, basically. That's what you want. You want to practice until it becomes obvious to you. And then you don't make the same mistakes again. Okay, so I have a track by uh, Justin Robbins. Let's see. It's called Godless. All right, let's listen to it.
it's pretty cool. So. There is nice EQ on the brass and on a bunch of things the EQ is nice. So the main problem with this is uh, the constant rumble. So if you listen from around, actually pretty much doing the whole track. There is a super low bass and it's getting in the way of the, of the hits. You can, oh, whoa, that's lower than I thought. It's really low. So that's taking headroom, unnecessary headroom for no reason. So, see, even if I brick wall it, it's barely making any difference. So, you have too much, you need to cut that super low harmonic and also cut a bit of the second super low harmonic. And because it's getting in the way, so you have a sustained bass non stop getting in the way of other stuff. See, that's like this constant bass. And it's loud already, so when you have your hits that happen, you have less contrast between the hits and that, that's the bass. So it makes the hits feel a bit weak, especially when they're supposed to feel loud here. Or louder. I mean like, <clears throat> they're supposed to feel punchier, that's what I mean. You just kind of text and punch away because there's less difference in volume between the hits and the sustain element, which is the bass here. Same here. At this point, the track is just too smashed. So you end up with also not enough dynamic range for the hits to breathe but also that constant sub bass which is taking all the headroom so it's like a combination of two things that sub bass and the fact that it's too loud the track is too brick walls so the hits can't breathe so once you fix that then you should have all that room in the sub bass for the hits to really punch dynamically and they will feel they will feel more epic you know they will feel more dynamic and more punchy that's what you want here oops Yeah, it's a bit hard to give EQ tips here because it's so smashed in the climax. But the mid range sounds like it would be cleared up a bit. Um. There are some, there are like some weird resonances in the brass, I think, around here. And like the violins are a bit too buried, the first violins. Um, but it's just hard because everything is kind of smashed into one texture here. So you really need to master it quieter. That's way too loud. Actually, these hits are somewhat punchy here. But before that, you can't really feel any punch. But here, it's actually surprisingly punchy but still too squashed. Yeah. It feels also like there is a bit too much stuff on the right all the time. Like your French horns actually sound on the right here and your French horns should actually be on the left. So it's also unbalancing the track a bit, so you want to watch out for the padding as well. Make sure that the padding is more even. You, you can have that kind of bram maybe a bit on the right and the French horns more on the left, that way it's more spread. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it feels a bit noisy and that's mostly due to the, to the, to the smash of, uh, smashing of the mastering. So. Everything should feel more separated, not just the drums, but all the instruments should feel more separated once you lower the limiter. Because 
the thing is limiting doesn't only destroy the drums it also destroys the tone because if you apply a lot of limiting especially kind of uh, shorter release times you will create distortion limiting is going to create distortion so you will also change the tone of the instruments and since limiting is on the whole track it's as if you were you were actually distorting the whole track so when you distort a whole track with bass as well it creates a bunch of distortion especially since you had this constant 25 hertz bass which is too much so if you actually drive this 25 uh, 25 hertz bass through a limiter you're just going to create a bunch of noise and extra harmonics so it's also not going to help i think maybe you were tempted to boost this track because you couldn't get enough loudness but the reason you couldn't get enough loudness is because that super low sub bass was taking all the headroom so maybe you had trouble actually getting um, even a normal loudness because of that but if you sort out the EQ first, then it will actually be easy to achieve a normal loudness. Um, that's why it's really important to have a good EQ. Make sure you don't have enough wild, random, rogue harmonics before you do the limiting. Otherwise, it's going to be super hard to push it at normal levels, basically. Especially in the low end, because bass is going to be triggering the limiter more. So, I'm glad it helped. And uh, yeah, good luck with this track. All right, guys, I guess that's all for now. Let me just refresh quickly. Uh, hold on, let me see if there is any questions I missed in the chat. Uh, okay, so I will say your, your name again. Me Titan. Is it Me Titan? Okay, I got it right now. Me Titan, right? That's it. <laughs> hey, Ed, what's up? Uh, oh, yeah, you can send. Just go ahead. I mean, it's fine, you can send one more, if you want. You know what, let's do... Okay, everybody, if you want me to review your track, let's do like that. If you want me to review your track, you have until uh, 9.30, so 11 more minutes. And, and after that, I will close the donations. So I won't review anything that gets sent past uh, 9.30, so in 10 minutes. Let's do like that. Uh, but yeah, feel free to send more. Actually, I'm I'm still I'm still feeling energetic, so I can keep going. He will send tracks all night. Whoa! I actually need to wake up at five a.m. tomorrow, so it's probably not gonna be a good all night. Oh yeah, send me a jazz track. I want to listen to a jazz track. Be right back, guys. My my glass is empty. I need more water. Yeah, so now if something lacks reverb, you know what I will do. I can make it more wet. <laughs> okay, so... One more track. Okay, so Brian just sent me a new track. Thank you, Brian. Let's listen to it. So galaxy. Thank you. 
So, um, the track lacks depth because you're overdoing the EQ in the highs. So, intro. The cello sounds a bit too panned on the right. Like I don't know if you can feel, but in the in that big part here, it, and even in the climax, it feels a bit unbalanced. So you want uh, maybe you can pan the violin. Hmm. Yeah, especially in this part here. Cello feels slightly too much on the right, um, but that's not really a huge deal actually. Uh, the problem is that in that main first part, it's just too much trouble, so it doesn't have much depth because there is so much air, so it feels super close, super upfront. So the, the cello is a bit on the left now, the, the cello that's a bit on the left, it's just way too, too airy. But actually the EQ of the other stuff in general is really nice. Like, it's quite fat and well cute. It's just that that cello kind of breaks the immersion because there's so much trouble, which shouldn't happen. And the strings sound a bit too dry here. Um, maybe you can put more reverb in this part. You can kind of automate the reverb. So in the climax, maybe you don't need so much string reverb because it could cloud things up. In this part, you can use more string reverb so you can automate it like maybe from, I don't know, maybe from 50% send or like 60% send to 75, just so that this part feels more lush, especially since you have a huge pad, uh, like a pad kind of synth behind. The strings feel a bit more, you know, Especially that violin that goes dun, 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 dun. It sounds a bit too close, I would say. But the reason it sounds too close is also the EQ. You just have too much air and too much air on these strings. Yeah. The thing is, if, if everything is bright, then there is no depth, right? So you can have the brass pretty buzzy and bright, but the strings need to be a bit more darker, that way you have more depth and, you know, like brass is naturally a buzzier instrument, um, so it's normal it will have more highs, but the strings naturally are not that buzzy, so of course it's trailer music, you can make it a bit more airy, a bit more exciting, it's good to, to add highs to the strings, but if you go so far, then it kind of makes the strings too artificial sounding, and it's just, yeah, if, if everything is bright, then there is no depth, that's the problem here. Yeah, it contrast, yeah. Uh, there is a high synth here, which is too airy also, like around 10, 20k. You kind of need to roll it off a bit because it's too much air. And the synth that goes like... Dee -dee 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 -dee. And of course the track is too loud. To me, that that's, uh, waveform looks like you used uh, either a really short limiter with like really harsh settings and a really short release. Or you also use the clipper in combination to a limiter. There's something, it's not, it's not like a soft limiting, it's, it's a pretty hardcore limiting, so it's kind of ruining the dynamics a bit too much here. And it makes your track sound a bit distorted and you like bass and you like warmth. Uh, so you definitely wanna, oh yeah, see, that's, what, that's what I heard. Um, so yeah, you kind of want to roll that back a bit. Just have less treble, just more depth, more warmth, more bass, more dynamics. Yeah, just like this part sounds, it's, it, that's a nice soft part at the end. Yeah. It's like... The climax just, with all the trouble, it kind of makes everything sound really close. So it's like you have this part where it sounds really far away and like in, in galaxy. 
<laughs> sounds like it's in a galaxy. And then you have this climax and everything sounds super upfront and breaks the dimension, dimensionality of the track. Okay, so next track by Tino. Tino, thank you for your donation. Let me download your track. Oh, it's called The District. I've seen a track called The District at some point. Maybe I've seen that somewhere. I don't know. Maybe it's a different district. Who knows? Okay, let's listen to it. So a few things with this one. First of all, it's really interesting and creative. I like it. Uh, second of all, um, the the kicks are. Th I think they're really important. The percussion, the constant pulsing rhythm is going to be important here. So we should make sure that we always have that impact in the bass. But you have this kind of whale noises which are probably like a bowed, uh, bowed metal th things, which kind of get in the way of the kicks and they kind of mask the kicks. So what I would do is maybe sidechain the, the constant pulsing kick to these big whale sounds so that they don't really mask the kick too much. Uh, and, and maybe boost the kick in volume so that it stays more audible throughout these parts. So. There's like a bunch of kicks, like dun, 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 dun. Like all these kicks need to be more hard and, and they kind of disappear into the textures here. You know, this, this kind of. You can probably filter some of these pads, the stuff that's not a kick. You can filter it a bit to make sure it doesn't take too much power from the kick, especially in the 80, 100 hertz range. It's a bit less heavy there and sidechain as well, so that the kick punches better. And uh, also there is a, a weird chirping kind of sound which is a bit too aggressive on the ears. Uh, this one. It's too aggressive. It just hurts the ears. Make sure you cut that one, the two harmonics. There is one really high and one a bit lower. Every time it comes around it's too much. Um, So yeah, filter that whale sound a bit, sidechain. Maybe you can get more interest if you maybe put delay on some of the elements or have some of the elements uh, go from left to right, like a panning automation or something. That could be really interesting and could go well with the style of the track, which is a bit crazy. You can, you can make stuff move around in circles or whatever. Or if you have a plugin that has like an automatic panning, or just manually pan uh, the panning automation could be interesting. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, make sure that kid kind of stays more punchy all the time. But yeah, really, really cool track. I like the sound design. Really cool sound design. So, um, all right. Well, that's gonna be it for the that's gonna be it for the reviews, guys. Uh, but yeah, that was really fun. So I hope you I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope my feedback was useful. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to prepare because I have to wake up at five a.m. tomorrow. But yeah, it was really fun. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next feedback stream, or maybe you will watch my next video. Next, uh, not next Monday, but next week I will have a mixed tip video as well. So that's gonna be there. And uh, as usual, uh, the second Sunday of every month I make a feedback stream. So yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Cheers.